In this video, we're going to dive into the CSS function clamp. This handy function allows you to set flexible sizes in CSS, which you can use for properties like font size, width, height, and more. By leveraging clamp, you can reduce the need for media queries, making it much easier to adapt your site or layout for mobile devices. Let's take a closer look at how it works. To demonstrate, I've prepared a simple example. Here's a page with a heading and a paragraph, an h1 tag and a p tag. I've already added some basic styles, centering the text, setting font weights for the heading, and adding margins to the paragraph. Now let's focus on the font size of the heading. Initially, I've set the font size to 100 pixels for the h1 tag. Then, I added media queries to decrease the font size step by step as the screen size shrinks, from 100 to 90, then 70, and finally 50 pixels. This is a common approach many of you might recognize, however, there's a better way to achieve the same effect without writing multiple media queries. Let me show you how to do this with the clamp function. First, I'll remove all those media queries. We don't need them anymore. One idea is to use relative units. For example, instead of setting font size to 100 pixels, I can use 8 view width, 8% 8 of the viewport width. With this approach, the font size dynamically adjusts as the screen size changes. For instance, on a screen 1600 pixels wide, the font size would translate to 128 pixels. As the viewport shrinks to 320 pixels, the font size reduces to 25.6 pixels. This flexibility is great, but it has drawbacks. On very wide screens, the heading might grow too large, and on very small screens, it might shrink too much. For example, at 1920 pixels wide, the heading could become 153 pixels tall, too big for multi-line headings. Conversely, on a 320 pixel wide screen, the heading shrinks to just 25 pixels, which is barely readable. So how can we maintain flexibility while controlling the range of changes? In this case, we can use the clamp function. Here's how it's used. Clamp takes three arguments. The first is the minimum value, the second is the current value, and the third is the maximum value. For example, if I want the heading size to stay between 50 pixels and 100 pixels, I set the minimum value to 50 and the maximum to 100. The middle value, which is the preferred size, should be a relative unit. If I set it to 75 pixels, the size would always be 75 pixels, because that's an absolute unit. It doesn't adapt to screen size changes. Instead, we pass a relative value like 8 view width. This way, the heading will be 8% of the viewport width, but it won't exceed 100 pixels or shrink below 50 pixels. Let's see how this works. At 1600 pixels, the font size is 100 pixels. As I resize the window, the size grows or shrinks. At around 1270 pixels, it reaches the maximum value, 100 pixels, and doesn't increase further. Similarly, as I decrease the size, it shrinks to the minimum value, 50 pixels, at around 620 pixels, and doesn't go smaller. This is how the clamp function provides a flexible size within defined limits. You may wonder how to determine the middle value more precisely. For example, I want the heading size to be exactly 100 pixels when the viewport is 1600 pixels wide. In this case, one view width equals 16 pixels. Dividing 100 pixels by 16, we get 6.25. So, setting 6.25 view width ensures the heading will be 100 pixels at a 1600 pixels viewport width. Let's check this. So, first, let's set this value. Then, we'll set the viewport width to 1600 pixels and check the font size. It is 100 pixels. If I start increasing the viewport width, the font size doesn't change anymore, meaning it has reached its maximum value. However, if I decrease the viewport width slightly below 1600 pixels, for example by 10 pixels, the font size immediately becomes 99.375 pixels. This shows that as the viewport width decreases, the font size also starts to decrease. The maximum font size is reached at a viewport width of 1600 pixels. With further decreases in width, the font size continues to shrink until it stabilizes at some minimum value. For instance, a font size of 50 pixels is achieved at a viewport width of approximately 798 pixels. In this way, you can calculate the current font size based on the viewport width. Alternatively, you can use tools like the min-max calculator to simplify this process. Here, you input the minimum and maximum values. For instance, if the viewport width is below 400 pixels, the size will remain at 50 pixels. Between 400 pixels and 1200 pixels, it will adapt, and at 1200 pixels and above, it will max out at 100 pixels. The tool generates the clamp formula, which you can copy and use in your CSS. The CSS clamp function has excellent support in modern browsers. According to Can I Use, it's supported by 96% of browsers. 
The only exceptions are Internet Explorer and a couple of less popular browsers. So you can confidently use Clamp in your projects without worrying about cross-browser compatibility. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new web development tutorials. See you in the next video. Bye.